Tonight on Journeys, Prime Minority MPs resolved to boycott the Electoral Commission henceforth after they were prevented from entering the EC's headquarters to submit a petition for recollation of the Techiman South constituency results. We will boycott her and her commission in Parliament. We will not be heard. She will never be heard by us. God bless our hope. Again, the Minority Caucus in Parliament undertakes its own collation of the disputed Techeman South constituency parliamentary results, claiming the NDC won by over 293 votes. We are fighting the injustice. The injustice which led to the loss of life of Ayarik and Tajuddin. The only justice we can get for them to their memory is for the truth of who lawfully and legitimately wanted to myself. Well, the minority contradicts its parliamentary candidate on the exact votes the party secured. Still in parliament, the majority in parliament eats humble pie as I say Chairman Sabunso apologizes to Formina MP for kicking him out of the party. Sorry, and I'm part of the party, so I'm also sorry. And in business? In business, the Agri Chamber is raising huge concerns about the imminent hike in maize prices across the country ahead of the festive season. My name is Aisha Brian. We're live from our studios in Kokom Limle on digital address GA 099 2539 on Go TV channel 144, on DSTV channel 421, and on DTT because we are free to air. We begin with minority MPs who today embarked on a collation of the Techiman South parliamentary election results, which they claim the NDC candidate Christopher Bayer won by 293 votes. The Electric Commission declared the NPP candidate Martin J. Mensa Kosa after he secured 49,682 votes as against the NDC's 49,205 votes. But the minority claims the EC's figures did not include all polling station results in the constituency. If the NDC won the seat, it would constitute, uh, constitute a parliamentary majority. Here are minority MP James Klutavaji and their leader Harun Idrisu addressing the matter a while ago. May I now respectfully, Deputy Leader, I'm handing over to you. You go polling station by polling station, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the media, I repeat, we are not the Electoral Commission. We are not purporting to be officers of the Electoral Commission. A certified collated resource. If even I'm dissatisfied, then I can tell the court that I'm dissatisfied with this. Let anybody from any media house, including the international media, share with me their evidence of a copy of certified collated resource for Techima South Parliamentary State. This is shameful to the Electoral Commission of Ghana that you conduct an election two weeks into it neither the candidate nor his representative or even the NDC as an interested party can boast of an official copy of the outcome of that elections. The return officer is required under CI 127 if they have a declaration to post a copy in the constituency office I have mine for Tamale Saab. So for Tachima Saab, Deputy Leader, Deputy Leader, Leader is true. So colleague, media, follow. Wherever you want to inspect the pink sheet, they are here. But we, we are not the Electoral Commission. We are not purporting to be. But we are fighting the injustice. The injustice which led to the loss of life of Ayarik and Tajuddin. The only justice we can get for them 
to their memory is for the truth of who lawfully and legitimately won Techima South, determined by a certified collated resource, is declared in accordance with law by the Electoral Commission. They collated and recollated in Banda. An important principle of the rule of law is not just natural justice, but equality of the law. There can be no laws for MPP and different laws for NDC. In the Banda constituency, three coalitions were done at the request of the new patriotic party. We demand same. Deputy Leader, you know your arithmetic and uh, statistics. At least if for nothing at all, you won't come with such corrections. And your okay. percentage, thank, your percentage thank you, thank will you be very 100. Much, thank you very much. Thank you God bless. Colleagues, thank you. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much. And then uh, good meet to uh, our listeners and then the media. We thank you very much. What we are coming to do this evening is very simple. This is what we are asking the uh, Electoral Commission to do. It's a matter of adding one to another one. One plus one is two, it's not three. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you. We'll return to today's news conference in a bit, but it appears the NDC's coalition results differs from what its parliamentary candidate told us yesterday on Top Story. Listen. We want all the media houses to be there for us to do the coalition. The minimum per hour results is about 700 vote difference for the parliamentary, which we have the pin sheets available. I can't, we can't even let the media houses go through one by one, just to be sure. Why is it that they are insisting they will not do coalition or recoalition? Like the leader of the house said, initially they did for Banda more than two, three times. Techime alone, you insist in law, what is the secret? And in any case, we are entitled to recoalition. If they've done coalition, it is just a matter of simple distance, which we expect the whole world stakeholders, Peace Council, Christian Council, to note that this is something that has just started small. And we expect that if they don't come in, something bad could happen in Techime. It's not a trade, but that's I'm the reality. I'm interested in that. So then, um, what could happen if. These as, we speak, demands as, are as we speak now, there's a demonstration in Techima, isn't it? Yes, and that will not end. I mean, um, we're not going to allow the fact that you don't do coalition and then you bring in military to kill our people after bearing the death. You still insist that you are going to take power by force. This is not a military regime. How many MPP people died of that? So we insist that the right thing be done and we'll fight it till the latter end. Will the lives or for that matter, the tension in the area and the protest and the chaos that may result from it because we've seen burning of ties and all in the course of some of these um, demonstrations, uh, would it be worth you coming in as member of parliament over someone else going, you know, going forward? Will it, will it be at peace if there's a situation where all this destruction happens just to lead to you taking over as member of parliament? Elect? What is the essence of democracy? It's the people's choice, isn't it? Now, you forcefully disagree with the, uh, the democracy and then you decide to bring a military system. You kill two people, third person dead the next day, just because you want power forcefully. Earlier, minority MPs broke through a police barricade and marched to the headquarters of the Electoral Commission to protest the outcome of the 7th December 2020 polls after they were prevented from entering the EC's headquarters to submit a petition for recollation of the Techim and South constituency. They resolved to boycott the Electoral Commission henceforth. Joseph Opokogako is our man who followed the protest. Minority in Parliament insist the NDC parliamentary candidate for Tejiman South, Christopher Bayere, won the seat which has been declared for the MPP candidate, Martin Ejemen Sakosam. The Tejiman South seat is important because the minority and majority both have 137 seats. MPs march peacefully to the Electoral Commission to present a petition. At the rage runabout, police had mounted a barricade insisting they would not allow the MPs to pass.
After a series of confrontation, the MPs broke down the barricade and marched towards the EC headquarters. In the ensuing scuffle, MP for Kusiga Ladi Ayamba fell to the ground. MP for Sanerigu ABA Fuseni says they broke down the barricade because it was unlawful. This is an illegal barricade mounted. On what, on what strength of the law did the police erect the barricade? Can you tell me? Under which law? Under which act? They, they insist that they were here to protect public property, and which public, uh, including, including which public the premises. Property has been destroyed. Which public property has been destroyed? So it's a funny thing. It's one of the oppressive tactics they use against uh, uh, innocent people of this country. You, I, I want you to tell me your own experience with the security team that was here. I, at a point in time, we I saw you in a scaffold. I was in a scaffold with them, and I managed to break through and get out. That is why I just tell you that... And, the and this was one of the armed officers? Yes. Why would you do that as an what? MP engaged in I a scaffold that, uh, are, with an armed police look, officer? We are, prepared, we are prepared to lay our, our, our lives down for this democracy. We will not allow anybody to suppress us. MPs eventually converged in front of the Electoral Commission. Another barricade had been mounted by the police, stopping the MPs from entering. The minority demanded that a senior official of the Electoral Commission is sent out to receive the petition. After waiting at the premises for about an hour, the minority leader requested that the police officials who were preventing them from going in take the petition and deliver to the EC chairperson. Any police officer. We were here. We have been ignored by the Electoral Commission. Thanks to God and thanks to the future of our democracy. Any senior police officer who feels obliged can come for the petition. But no one did. A frustrated minority leader had no choice but to read out the petition demanding collation of the Tichiman South parliamentary results. We are demanding that pursuant to Regulation 2, 3 and 43 of the Public Elections Regulation CI 127, all results of polling centers for Tichiman South be certified, collated, aggregated and declared. And whoever wins, let that person be the winner. But we will not accept the declaration that was done in the absence of our candidate, in the absence of our party, and in the absence of certified coalition results of polling stations in Tachima South. He promised the side of parliament would boycott EC when they show up in parliament. We will boycott her and her commission in parliament. We will not be heard. She will never be heard by us. God bless her. Some of the MPs voice out their concerns about what they say is wrongful acts of the electoral commission. My colleague Joseph Opokugapo uh, followed the protest through to Parliament for the coalition. He joins me now via Zoom. Uh, Joseph Opokugapo, we witnessed that protest in the afternoon and later the coalition of pink sheets from Tichiman South. What next for the minority MPs? Do we know? I've been asking that question of a number of the MPs, including the Sagnerigu MP, ABF Fuseni, and Samuel Kudetra Blapa, who is the MP for North Tongue. They say they will use all possible legitimate legal means uh, to ensure that uh, Martin and James Sakosa, who's been declared winner of that particular poll on behalf of the MPP, doesn't end up becoming the member of parliament for that area. Um, in fact, in the conversation with Mr. Blackwell, he mentioned that among the legitimate options that they have is going to court and even using what he calls citizen's arrest as a way of preventing people who they think have done wrong from having their way as far as the nation's advancement is concerned. So um, they, they've not given that hint, but it looks like it will be a very interesting day on the dawn of 7 January because they say they will use all possible legitimate means to avoid the NPP from taking over that particular seat. Joe, but it appears that the difference in votes, which the minority MPs claim puts them ahead in Techiman South, uh, is quite different or differs from what the parliamentary candidates himself told you yesterday in that interview. How are they responding to this? So we've had three different figures thus far. Um, the parliamentary candidate, uh, Christopher Bayre, told us that there was a difference of 700 votes. Earlier in the day, when we had a conversation with the Nocturne MP, Mr. Blackwell, 
uh, right on course with you, Aisha, he said that the difference was about 500. And then the deputy minority leader, James Klucha Veji, when he addressed the media on behalf of the minority, said the difference between the NDC and the NPP in that constituency was 293. Mr. Blapa has explained why that is so. He says that at the time that the figures were being updated, that's when they have the figures. So, for example, he says that yesterday, then when the parliamentary candidate gave us the 700 figure, after that time, that was the difference. But the figures were continually being updated based on the pinches that were coming through and the figures that were being added. He explained that after the time he spoke to us earlier in the afternoon, the collated results thus far then had the 500 difference. But the final figure they're working now with is the 293 because that's the figure they had as at the time they completed the tallying of all the over 200 polling stations in that particular constituency. The House is scheduled to adjourn today. What more can you report from Parliament? They actually adjourned a few minutes ago with the closing addresses from the Speaker, the minority, and the majority leaders, and the indication being that uh, the next time the House will be sitting will be sometime on the, uh, between the 4th and the 6th of January, when we're expecting the president to deliver the final State of the Nation address, and then uh, the state parliament, uh, the, the, the seventh parliament on the 6th of January, after their last sitting, will be considered to have been dissolved. But essentially, it's been Christmas messages from the leadership of the House, urging MPs to continue working towards the development of the country and the leaders wishing our Ghanaians well going into the festive season. And it's a parliament uh, which everyone will, would wish to see how it will be conducting business. Thank you very much. Uh, Poku Gakpo is our man in parliament. Let's take a while longer in parliament because majority in parliament has condemned the NDC MPs who marched to the EC headquarters, describing it as unfortunate. Vice chairman of the parliament's defense and interior committee, Colin Sousama Nkwa, told the media the march is part of a grand scheme by the NDC to destabilize the country. Because of one man's selfish interest, one man parochial interest, Ghana must burn. It is sad. They should have the nation attacked. NDC presidential candidate, who is also the former president, must look at the children and the women of this country. If indeed he claimed to be a man of compassion, then the time is now to demonstrate that. Now he's proving to be intolerant. And it appears that what they are doing has potency to drive away potential investors from investing in this country. Watch international media. They are dwindling all our, our democratic credentials as a country. And this is not right. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to state it unequivocally, without any shred of doubt, that the elections are over and Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado has been validly declared as president-elect. Case closed. We're live on uh, Joy News, uh, coming to you live from our studios in Kokom Limle on digital address GA099-2539. We'll take a break. We'll bring you more. Welcome back to Joy News Prime to the rest of our stories and scores of NDC supporters who thronged the Lower Menya Krobo constituency to protest the results of the 2020 presidential elections have invoked cases on the Electoral Commission over claims that the commission manipulated the outcome of the polls in favor of the president, Ekufuado. The party sympathizers hit the streets of Mo and Odumase Krobo in protest of what they claim to be a deliberate move by the election management body to ensure the incumbent president won another term in office. Clad in red attires, the protesters amidst brass bands music held placards with several inscriptions mostly chastising the EC and the NPP of rigging the elections.
the NDC to the NPP, the majority leader in parliament, Osei Chemen Sabunzu, has apologized to the MP for Fomena, Andre Siama, for supporting a move to kick him out of parliament over his decision to go independent. Andre Siama, who won back the Fomena seat after a fierce contest, is now key to the NPP securing a majority in the next parliament. We'll bring you snippets of an interview that will air at 9 p.m. on PM Express tonight. The party itself has uh, eating humble pie. No, but I'm asking and you. And I belong to the party. Have you eaten? You must eat humble pie. I'm saying the party has eaten humble pie. Have you eaten yours? I'm part of the party. If I'm the party, asking you as a person. If the party has eaten humble pie, by extension of reasoning, it comes you to have, me. You have eaten humble pie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> In your conversation with him, and this may possibly be on the light on, but it's a serious one. Have you admitted that? Listen, we misjudged this. You're a human being, so you make mistakes. Have yes. you admitted this to him? The the matter of the expulsion, you mean? Yes, expulsion, yes. Yes, the way he was um, why? I think that the position of the party is that, no. You keep going to let's, the party. Let's, let's, but, you are, let's, but you, you let's represent the steps. party and government let's, in, in let's parliament. Let's trace our steps back. <laughs> and, uh, so that James, is it. I, I know you to be a very humble person. You don't I mind am. at all conceding. I'm, uh, Why are you hiding under the cloak of the party when this is you? I'm a member of the party. The I'm a member of the party. The, the decision was not my decision, but I was bound by that. So mm. if the party now has taken a decision to unwind, mm. it affects me. You, you, so you, you communicated this to him? You met him? Why, why, why wouldn't I? You said, I'm sorry. That the party is sorry, and I'm part of the party, so I'm also sorry. <laughs> full interview is at 9 p.m on the joy news channel do make a date now joy news in partnership with the national road safety authority is waging a campaign to ensure that accidents on our roads are significantly reduced we have been speaking with some drivers and passengers as well as some authorities in road safety to share the ideas on the best ways to arrive alive in this festive season there's more in the following report as part of the campaign, John News visited the Sherman Lorry Station where our news team interacted with some drivers and passengers on the roles they are playing to keep our roads safe. We need to be in a, a conservation way. The driver not to go speedy. Before I met to Kano, we bought my seat belt. No matter how many, no matter how many. And if you have long legs like mine and you are sitting in a trotsky, Charlie, like mine and you are sitting in a trotsky, Charlie, now I give you Lau. Uh, it, it's crazy. The driver himself, when I was interacting with him, he said that he dons his seat belt, but the problem is passengers don't have seat belts. At the Kwame Nkrumah cycle, John Yu spoke to some passengers at the VIP station. This is a, a, a season whereby uh, the roads is very busy. Everybody should be very careful, especially the drivers. I said, I was here say, I was here to say, I was um, speed I will ensure the driver does not speed on the road. I will also make sure that I'm properly strapped in a seat belt to prevent injury in case of accidents. What we have to do is we have to put on the safety precaution what we have to do so that we can reach our destiny safely. Interacting with John News, Executive Director of the Road Safety Authority, May Obuyebua, highlighted several acts of indiscipline on our roads that need to be addressed. The indiscipline on our roads are many, from all stakeholders. Let me take, for example, uh, the drivers. I'm not talking about commercial drivers alone. All types of drivers. In fact, there are some drivers that you look at the vehicle, the V8, the person in the, what, his, his jacket or his suit, and you think that he should know better. But these people are the same people who are using, uh, they are not using the main road, but rather the shoulders of the road, wanting to overtake vehicles, but using the shoulders of the road. These are some of the indiscipline we see on our road. People are still using their mobile phones, either they are texting or they are making calls. 
member of the GPRTU, Samuel Ama, lauded the initiative to introduce speed cameras on our roads. Two things that I think um, they are about to do, because most of the time we do see that um, normally there used to be some discriminations on roads. And if now the speed cameras will be there and it's not like a policeman will be holding the, you know, the gun and you know, be pointing to someone that hey, you are over speeding. You know, I think um, whoever you are, you know, it tells you that, hey, there are speed cameras. The traffic unit of the police service expressed worry at the surge in carnage on our roads despite the many sensitization programs and called for a more proactive approach to dealing with the situation. If you look at the data, it's a bit worrying. And we also shouldn't lose the fact that there were certain incidents that are also fueling this stage. For the first time in our data, it looks as if Ashanti region is leading the fatalities. We're well, live on Joy News Prime. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll bring you business. Welcome to business. I'm Charles Item. Let's start off with the agri ministry because a development story that Joy Business is taking, it's all about the shortage of maize across our market centers. In fact, the Chamber of Agribusiness has raised this alert some days ago, but no one listened. In a statement, the Chamber released a four-point situation analysis of the state of maize in Ghana. As you can see on your screens, the first point is that COVID-19 disrupted the production systems, which affected the crop production chain. Also, maize producers in the Upper West region, as well as the Upper East and Northern regions, experienced delayed rains for the planting season. What this means is that farmers reported lower productivity in their line of duty. Also, the third is that those who rely on hybrid seeds received their inputs very late. And the very last point is that immediately the government opened borders after the lockdown. Available maize on the market was sold by the Bokinabe traders above the market price. This, according to the Agribusiness Chamber, puts Ghana's maize industry in jeopardy. We shall be keeping a keen eye on this to give you updates as and when, as this may impact the cost of food across the country. Away from that, leading insurance intermediary in Ghana, KEK Insurance Brokers Limited, has rebranded as part of plans to improve its market offering. After more than 30 years of providing insurance solutions to its clients, the company says that the new phase has become necessary partly due to the lessons learned from the COVID-19 pandemic on the need to improve its digital services. There is more in this report. The KK Corporate rebranding launch brought together key players in the insurance industry, including managing directors of various insurance companies, industry associations, the National Insurance Commission, among others. According to the managing director of KK Insurance Brokers Limited, Shaibu Ali, the new logo is part of the company's plans of improved service delivery for the next 30 years. This will determine the packaging and presentation of key things like the company logo. We at KK believe that after 30 years in existence, our logo is matured and needs a new lease of life to take us to the next stage. This new stage that we are entering is a stage where insurance cannot be done as we are doing now. In an interview with Joy Business, Mr. Ali said COVID-19 has re-emphasized the need for digitization taking the center stage with regards to the purchase and sale of insurance products. Digitalization. COVID has pushed us to digitalize. Like I've said on countless occasions, we were all thinking about it, but we didn't think that it was here. But because of COVID, we have had to start it. So we at KEK, we decided to run with it. Going forward, all personal lines is going to be digitalized. Your personal car, your personal house, your travel insurance, you don't need to come to the office. You can just do it on our app. If you have a claim, you can report it on our app. We are taking away that. We are leaving only the big, big commercial businesses where we keep the personal interface. But for all others, we are strictly digitalizing them. 
Deputy Commissioner of Insurance at the National Insurance Commission, Michael Kofi Ando, proud to unveiling the new logo, hinted of plans the Commission is putting in place to grow the gross premium income of the industry from the current 3.8 billion cities to 10 billion cities in the next three years. The main areas of focus for the expected growth include marine insurance, annuities, and group life. In pursuit of the above, the NIC will sign a tripartite cargo insurance protocol with the Ghana Shippers Authority and the Ghana Revenue Authority to facilitate effective enforcement of Section 37 of the Insurance Act, which requires all goods being imported into Ghana to be insured in Ghana. This is expected to significantly boost growth in the marine insurance sector. Key associations in the industry such as the Ghana Insurance Association, the Insurance Brokers Association of Ghana, and the Chartered Insurance Institute of Ghana took turns to share their solidarity messages with KEK Insurance Brokers Limited. And that'll be all for business. Sports is up next. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. My name is Hans Mensah Ando and I bring you sports. Former Vice President of the Ghana Football Association, George Free has accused the leadership of the FA of being selective in their handling of players who merit national team call-ups. According to him, a player was sent home because he plays for his football club. Many have accused the leadership of the Ghana Football Association of being selective. Recently, a club official accused the technical team of the Black Satellites of refusing to play his player Salim Mohamed because he campaigned for George Afriye in the 2019 GFA elections. George Afriye corroborated the allegations leveled against the technical team by Yakub Abdul Salam, claiming that his player was asked to go home despite reporting to camp. Let's see what Coach Karim Zito did. He first invited, I think, 140 players. If I'm right, I may be wrong. Okay. Then I, I hear some Division One clubs were making noise. So the coach decided to extend invitation to all the Division One clubs. So you know what they did? They will call you and ask you to bring one player. They call the Division One. This I'm saying this as a matter of fact. They will call a Division One club and ask you to bring one player to the camp. So I was there when I had a call from my administrative officer that, oh. Assistant coach of the under 20 has called that they should bring one player. I said, tell him to call the coach of my team. He shouldn't call me. He should call the coach of my team. He shouldn't call me. He should call the coach of my team. And then the guy came back and said, oh, see, they don't know the number. I said, provide the phone number of the under 20 coach of my team to the coach. So the guy then finally gave them one player. And incidentally, the player comes from WAC. He's, he's one of the best players in my team. He's called um, uh, 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 Haji, uh, uh, was Osman Haji, from Wa. He's called Osman Haji, from Wa. So I said, do you know that when the boy got to the camp, traveled all the way and got to the camp, they told him that it's, they finished, uh, what we call, COVID, so she should go back. And guess what I told my, my, my administrative officer? When he called me, I said, forget it. He shouldn't call any player. If they cannot deal with the coach, you don't do it. But the guy went behind me and still sent the boy. I said, look, if you send the boy, they'll send him back because he's George. He didn't believe me. So he sent the boy. They sent him back. This happened here. here. But I've never talked about it before. Have you ever heard me or any member of my team complaining about this? But this thing happened. Mr. Afri has advised the GFA to ensure an all-inclusive management of Ghana football. In, in, in the year 2017, is that the 2017 we played the Wafo? Yes. Okay. You recall that prior to the Wafo, we had lost the Chang qualifying match to Burkina Faso. Yes. The technical team were summoned before the executive committee. I sat in that meeting. I remember very well asking, you can ask all the co coaches from Kwesi Apia, Dao Dalutrot, and Masue Kunedu. I personally ask, how come Lomote has not been called into the local black star? You ask them. I, me, George. I didn't say my player. I said, Dreams FC Lomote, why is he not part of the list? Because where? We were playing in the same zone, remember? 
dreams and planets were in the same zone. So I've seen the player play. And I think that at the, the level they were calling players, that player merit the call-up. And I've done that. Look, I was the chairman of the national under 20. Parma dominated under 20. I was the chairman of the under 20. Intala is dominated the under 20. It is Ghana you are seven. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, matter at all where the player is coming from. If the player is coming from Bumpurugu and he's a good player, he's a good player, he's Ghana. The Black Satellites won the Wafu Zombie Cup of Nations after a 2-1 victory over Burkina Faso last weekend. That's it for sports. We take a break here on Joy News Point. It's time for showbiz. Becky is here with the very latest. Hello to you, Aisha. Hello, bestie. Oh, you call me bestie. I'm so honoured. <laughs> Today is Samini's birthday. Today, oh. on the twenty second of December. Okay. Samini was born, and um, I had well this evening he will be celebrate. Uh, he will be releasing releasing a song, a video to for his birthday to his for his birthday. So oh. uh, it's just a birthday gift for fans out there. So at nine p.m. exactly. I I wish we could you know hmm. have played, oh. seen the video, played it here first, but. He'll be releasing it. We'll be expecting that. So happy, happy birthday to legendary Samini. Happy, happy, Sangani. happy birthday. So do you have a song of Samini that you uh, like so much? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. Samini, mini, I'm okay. I'll say day. I'm okay. Oh. Don't you think about me? Oh, yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Samini. I mean, we you love you. On one of yes, yes, songs. yes. He has to. <laughs> but remember yesterday, uh, there was uh, Joy, uh, Nine Lessons, and Carl. Yes. Uh, a lot of people didn't get to feel okay. you know, what exactly happened yesterday. So we're bringing oh, they it back to up. Yeah. Great job. We want to wish you a joyous Christmas. Hey, we want to wish you a joyous Christmas. We want to wish you a joyous Christmas from the bottom of our heart. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord. And because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. Yes, but uh, let's talk about uh, Rapaholic 2020. So a lot of people thought that Rapaholic 2020 wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. But Sarko Dier in this interview confirmed to us that Rapaholic is actually happening. It's a virtual concert. I mean, during the festive season, uh, you always bless us with Rapaholic. Uh, is it still happening? I'm, I'm hearing rumors that it's not happening this year. Is it happening? On the 25th, the tickets are out, so you can go and grab it. Now, if you go on my page, you'll find it on my bio. Um, all the links are everywhere, so grab your, um, your tickets. It's limited tickets. We're doing a virtual concert. The, the virtual tickets are going to come out soon. But the auditorium limited tickets are out, so tables and a few flat fee tickets for people. I don't know how to dance. Thank you. Uh, you. But you're better than Lexus. Oh, I like far, you like far that. Better. I like you like that. And you wanted to say hi to Hager. To Hager, 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 Hager of Gihog, yeah. We love you. We Hager. love you. We and love that'll you. be it for showbiz. Thank you so much, Becky. And that'll be it for the bulletin tonight. My name is Aisha Brian. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of us. <laughs>